Hi everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. I'm going to take you through here the cis-trans isomerism in complex ions using this diagram here. Now the shape for these two complex ions involving cobalt 3 plus is clearly octahedral. We have a way of drawing this for our exam questions, but here's a pretty good uh, 3D version of it to help us out. What we'll also notice we've got is uh, four types of one monodentate ligand, each of the NH3s around each cobalt, and also we've got two of the CLs on there as well. Now, they've got a minus charge in this diagram, but again, this isn't how we would draw it in the exam, but it is going to help us uh, visualize this. So, what else have we got? Well, the most important thing is we clearly have a difference here between cis and we have a difference between trans. So, what's the cis one look like? Well, it looks like, from first glance, as long as you've got two here on an equatorial, so around the middle, position on the complex iron, then you've got cis. Whereas, actually, it's a little bit more sophisticated than that. What we need to concentrate on for the cis is that the two are at 90 degrees to each other. So the two which are the same out of the six, where the other four are the same as each other, if the two that are the same, the chlorines in this particular example, are the same and at 90 degrees to each other, then it's the cis. And I can't stress that enough. It's not about exactly them being equatorial. We could have had one of them here, for instance. It's about the fact they have a 90 degree angle between them. Now, if you compare that to the trans one, then over here what we can see is straight line all the way through. And again, it could have been uh, through the top position, but we've got them here around the middle again. Here, the bond angle is quite clearly between the two, 180 degrees, and that makes it the trans isomer. So for each example, though, what we've definitely got is four of one kind of monodentate ligand and two of another. But you could also have, instead of the four of one kind, so instead of the four NH3s, for instance, here, you could have two bidentate ligands, and they basically cover the same job. And what they allow us to have is these two, the chlorines in either example, to still be positioned at 90 and 180 degrees from each other. So the biggest application of this isn't in actually an octahedral shape. It's in a square planar shape using platinum. And that's because of the cisplatin chemotherapy drug. You can see those examples here then. So this is cisplatin and transplatin. Now, for the cisplatin, what we're looking at is either the two chlorines or the two NH3s being at a 90 degree angle apart. And that's the most important thing just here. And then for the transplatin, we can see that they are across from each other 180, just like before. So it's very, very similar. It's just we haven't got the uh, two axial positions that would run down the middle of an octahedral. We've just got the square planar shape instead. Now, this is the only example at AS level for OCRA of square planar that you actually have to be aware of. But be flexible on the day of the exam. This is what it looks like, and it's really easy to spot now and see how we can have four groups positioned. It's very much like the octahedral as I described a second ago, where they're all around the middle. Now, the important thing is which one of these is going to be of use to us as a chemotherapy drug, because otherwise this idea of looking at the stereoisomerism is completely irrelevant. Well, it is just this one. So just the cisplatin, because at these chlorine points here, but it can also do, if you look into this online, some sort of hydrogen bonding using the NH3s. But from these chlorine points here, we can undergo a type of ligand substitution at the guanine base on DNA. And once it does that inside a nucleus of a cell, then it's going to prevent the cell from undergoing DNA replication. And so the cell enters apoptosis, which is programmed cell suicide and dies. Now, specifically, this is used to target fast multiplying cells, but it can also affect other cells. And as a result, one of the very unfortunate side effects of chemotherapy using cisplatin can actually be death. And it is important you're aware of that as part of your discussion of cisplatin for the OCRA A level. I hope this clears up some work on cisplatin and the cis-trans isomerism in both the octahedral and in the square planar shape ideas. I'll leave it to the rest of your revision. Happy revising.